What is up guys, it's Swift here and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. In today's video we're going to be briefly recapping a war that just concluded. One Hive 2.0 versus One Hive. Let's take a look. Alright, we're going to start you off with a 9v9 attack. Shane WJJ versus Blizz. Uh, we call this attack the Grundy. Uh, this is a very effective strategy, uh, quite overpowered in my opinion, uh, not as overpowered as Witch Slap, but it does get the job done. And there's a little bit of wiggle room as you'll see as the uh, replay uh, progresses on. Uh, so we started off with a naked queen and I used a baby and wizard to funnel. Essentially going to do the same thing at 9 o'clock. Uh, as the queen's working her way towards 9 o'clock, uh, she does have healers and she's taking some expo fire, but it's not going to matter. She's just fine. He went ahead and dropped the P.E.K.K.A. and the P.E.K.K.A. is essential to this, so uh, going to kind of do like a P.E.K.K.A. walk is the intended, uh, or the intention rather, uh, for this attack strategy. But as you can tell, there's a mistake made here. Uh, the goal was to rage the Valks into the base without a wall breaker. But that storage was left, so they ended up walking. But it's not going to make too much of a, uh, a problem for them. Uh, are going to drop a little bit of early heal because we're expecting a double giant bomb in that compartment. And there was, so we got a lot of value from that heal. Um, here we're going to get a, a nice Lava Helm uh, pop, and it's in range of the Queen. Poison was a little misplaced, uh, so we didn't get all of them. So uh, as the... <coughs> uh, Kill Squad is making its way towards 3 o'clock. We're in a little bit of trouble, but that Baby Dragon's slowly making its way towards the Lava Pups, and we'll make quick work of that, so no big deal there. As the Queen is pecking on the wall, the Kill Squad is still up doing uh, doing work, and as you can tell, um, there was a little bit of mistakes made with the funneling, but uh, this base is pretty much wrecked at this point, so uh, very nice, very, very nice attack, and I actually tried this... Uh, uh, once and you know I got it first shot so it's uh, a very fun strategy and uh, to kind of break the monotony of witch slapping a base is always nice so get away from that uh, I loved using Valks back in the day anyways uh, when I was at Town Hall 9 myself so good job Shane next up uh, we're gonna take a look at an, another 9 uh, hit that I thought was uh, Pretty good. So um, we have uh, Tiri Teko here in a uh, um, shattered hog attack here. So this is a very good strategy, and this attack was very uh, executed uh, very well. So starting off with a golem at six o'clock uh, and a, a few wizards, as expected, behind try to create that uh, that nice funnel. So dropping the, the second golem in the middle. We did get a Tesla pop, a Tesla farm pop in the corner here, but it's not going to make a difference. Everything pretty, is pretty much out of the way of that. Um, so poisoning the king, we're going to drop that second, uh, third golem here, uh, the king behind, and that funnel is already set at this point. So we're going to go ahead and drop the jump. Um, and as our kill squad is making its way in, that uh, uh, golem is tanking fairly well. Um, so it is a Lava Hound CC, so it's not going to cause us too much problem. That Queen will lock onto it, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. So uh, we're just going to make our way towards that Queen with a second jump into the core of the base uh, with a heal. So those bowlers are going to uh, just wreck the, the core here, and they're just fine. Uh, moving on to the next compartment. Golem is doing its job very well. So at this point, we're just going to start trickling the hogs in. Um, and there are a few spring chat locations that we have to be aware of, but uh, for the most part, our kill squad is still alive and well. Our king did die, but it's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, heal was not needed with these hogs uh, due to how far we got in with the kill squad. So uh, queen still up with her ability, and at this point, the last defenses are going down, and uh, all we have left here is a Tesla farm and a mortar at nine o'clock so i'm going to speed this up here uh this is pretty much clean up here so a uh, great attack by tiri teko uh for one hive 2.0 all right uh, i'm going to go ahead and show another nine uh, attack this ward that uh was actually really good and uh, and i believe we did a La Loon hit here. 
Yeah. So we have Dr. Madman uh, for One Hive 2.0 taking on Alia F3i. Uh, so we got a Laloon here, a two Golem Laloon. Uh, so we're kind of looking at a kill squad here, and this is a, a very effective strategy. Um, so dropping a Golem at three o'clock with a few bowlers behind, we're going to get some nice value from those bowler skips. Um, along with the baby dragon and wizard that he dropped um, they're still up and doing work so they they cleared that and made a nice funnel for those bowlers to walk into the core here so we're going to throw a jump and rage uh, and at this point all the kill squad is going in as intended the queen the king the, all the bowlers uh, and uh, so far looking good we did poison the uh, queen to make uh, uh, to you know, soften the blows there so um, at this point, our Lalu portion is ready to fire away, and we're good. We did get a Hound pop, but it's off in that corner, so it's not going to make a difference. So at any mo moment now, he's going to be dropping his Hound and trickling in, and start trickling in these loons here. So it was nice that he cleared that entire side of the base before he even got to the Lalu portion. So um, very uh, uh, effective work with uh, his kill squad there so nice funneling so we're gonna go ahead and rage these two air defenses here and, and uh, we already had a hound pop uh, see if we can get another one here now this is very uh, what I thought was a misplaced hill but uh, uh, look at the amount of value that he's gonna get from this loon under this hill the entire time which is so neat um, takes out this Tesla uh, with the single loon and he's gonna finish off the wizard tower uh, with the final blow, knocking it down with splash damage as it's dropped to the ground. Uh, so we'll speed this up, but that very nice attack by Dr. Madman for One Hive 2.0. <clears throat> We're going to be going ahead and uh, showing uh, a couple, or three rather, uh, 10v10s that uh, were really, really, really solid attacks here. So Chad uh, using his Tunnel 10 Enter. Uh, for this 10v10 attempt and it was a very solid attack so look at the value that we're going to get from these bowler skips so uh, we didn't know that the, where the teslas were so we went ahead and drew them out with the wall breakers um, take notice of the distance between the elixir pump <clears throat> and the tesla he was able to get the bowler skip and kill both of those so that's a tremendous value from just uh, 12 camp space um, dropping two giants to tank for his queen and he's going to score this air defense in the corner here and he's going to try to get as much value from her as she possibly can or he possibly can excuse me Chad you're not a girl my bad <laughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and drop a golem here um, we're going to do like a little little kill squad um, per se um, sorry I didn't move my camera angle up here so it's kind of a bad angle Dropping a couple bowlers and a Valk and the um, Barbarian King. We're going to go ahead and rage this corner here. That loon's about to go down under that poison. Um, Queen is still up, has a slither of health left, but we're going to go ahead and score all these air defenses. So the amount of value that we got from the funneling and the kill squad is tremendous. So. Um, uh, we did opt for a hog raid here, and uh, the base is looking, you know, the attack's looking pretty good at this point, so we're, we're going to take down that uh, uh, Inferno before it even comes back off of the freeze spell, and uh, all the giant bombs were uh, triggered under that heal, so tremendous value from that. The Queen is actually still up. It's going to help take care of those, some of those uh, lava pups, but... Uh, uh, with well, that last kill, they're no match, so we're going to pretty much clean this base up with ease. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up here. So very nice attack by Chad for one hive 2.0. Always doing very good work with his attacks, uh, very methodical, so uh, fun to watch, my man. Very good attack. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, Armor Queen's hit on base 21. Um, Armor Queen versus Island Nomad. We opted for a La Loon for this attack, uh, and it was a perfect fit uh, for a lot of reasons, really, as, as we'll make our way through this attack here. We'll, we'll point out, uh, go ahead and make good pointers here. So, starting with a Naked Queen and a Minion to help funnel, um, we're going to get a, a good value from this Queen as she's uh, uh, just 
chipping away that corner here so that the uh, uh, mini kill squad can go in and take that queen with ease. Go ahead and drop the king here and a valk to take out that mortar so we don't walk. Dropping the last bit of valks here and a jump. They're just going to push into this core here and uh, it's going to go ahead and uh, poison the queen the king, and the loon. And gonna go ahead and get that queen kill here. So uh, uh, we got a very good uh, value from the the king and the queen uh, without expending very much camp space at all. So that was uh, well planned there. So nice job. Go ahead and drop these haste early here, as the uh, uh, hounds are gonna slowly make their way into the base. It's gonna slingshot them towards that air defense, and we're gonna get an early hound pop here. Dropping that third loon uh, at 12 o'clock with a couple loons behind him and a haste. Uh, we're going to try to make our way towards that last air defense. And then uh, as we're raged and healed, we're going to uh, make our way towards those expo uh, expos. And uh, we've done a very good job for this up to this point here. And we're about to get an our last hound pop here. So we're going to have a good amount of cleanup if these loons can make their way past this inferno into the last uh, couple defenses and he will uh he had two loons to drop the back in to distract uh finishing him off with the, uh, the group of uh, loons that were packed up that took out the uh inferno tower so um very good attack uh armor queen's done a, a hell of a job with these uh timmy tens so uh he actually this war, he got a six pack, so we're about to show another 10v10, and uh, uh, it is Armor Queen. So, one hell of a war for Armor Queen, without a doubt. So, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, Armor Queen's second attack, taking on the leader of One Hive Hell on Heels, smashing the space with the style with the Drag Loon attack. This was a very complex strategy, so it's a little hard to follow, so I'm going to do the best I can to uh, illustrate what he did and how he did it. Uh, dropping a wizard at three o'clock in just a moment you, uh, you, you he's gonna start that funnel and there it goes uh, taking on that dark barracks and that gold mine we're gonna uh, get, get both those down with the wizard alone so it's a good trade-off there uh, minions doing work on that dark elixir pump at 12 o'clock he's gonna drop his king take out that pump with a wizard on the dark elixir drill and uh, he's gonna fan a few more wizards behind us so we don't stall on that town hall uh, whole goal is to walk that king down um, and get that air defense that's sitting on right on the outside at 10 o'clock um, and notice he'll get a tremendous value from these wizards uh, just taking out those point defenses that are on the outside. Uh, Gollum is t doing a heck of a job tanking uh, for those wizards and the queen here and uh, in just a moment the queen's gonna walk down and take on that uh, uh, other air defense that's at around 2 o'clock breaking him in with a solid uh, uh, wall breaker <coughs> deployment there um, so it was very patient uh, and that's what these kind of attacks take so you're getting tremendous value from this queen here as, as they're walking down hasn't taken any damage whatsoever I'm uh, gonna get this gold storage down and then take on that uh, third air defense um, and then help with this golem just a little bit more now we're in the inferno range but it's not gonna make a difference Queen's still pretty much healthy, and we're gonna score the last air defense with a just a couple loons and a haste here. In that uh, cannon, well, I thought thought maybe the cannon, but I guess not. Excuse me. Uh, so queen finally goes down, and at this point we can go ahead and start making the funnel for the drags to uh, uh, go into the base. Only thing we have to worry about is that last inferno tower and the queen, um, but uh, with the remaining of like pretty much all of our spells left we're gonna make quick work quick work of this base uh we have four loons left in our arsenal um so uh, gonna hold those off just a little bit for the clone spell and it actually drops the haste and the clone spell into the same uh, uh, area um so we're gonna kind of heal and try to get that uh, just pinch that side in so that the drags keep going into the core like the uh, they were intended to do and he does uh in fact get the job done with just those loons alone so a uh, heck of a job there with his design of the attack and as you notice we don't have very many uh defenses left or structures left to take on and uh some uh, fairly healthy dragons there so 
Um, one hell of a raid, my man. Uh, I can't can't say any other word uh, to describe this attack. Just uh, amazing. Uh, very good job. Definitely something to be proud of. So, Armor Queen with a six pack for one hive 2.0. Next up, we're going to go ahead and show um, a couple 10 v11s uh, that were fairly high percent. So um, we're going to go ahead and show Texas Hammer taking on Amoxio, or I guess that's how you pronounce his name. I'm, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Um, dropping a Golem at three and a couple bowlers. We're going to do the kind of traditional uh, way of pinching a side in 10 v11, and uh, the Golem bowler is just typically the the best way to do it, and they get a lot of value from the uh, that rage uh, and their bowler skips. So triggering a double giant bomb there, it's actually probably a good thing um, in the long run. So we get uh, quite a bit of value from those. So just cleaning up uh, a couple of the uh, structures that we can, uh, where we can, and it really just drops that archer uh, down so that we can lure the CC out of the way, and we're gonna go ahead and take care of that with the baby dragon. Always like that CC lure, so we got a lot of value from that uh, funnel uh, at that corner uh, with the golem bowlers, and we are able to draw the CC. So it was a very good trade-off. Loons down. All we have to worry about now is that hound, and it will pop at any moment. Um, those baby dragons are really, really strong, especially uh, uh, for like level four plus uh, baby dragons. They just, just do work. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop a poison around the baby dragon and uh, uh, clean up those pups quickly. And at this point, we can go ahead and start the second phase of our funneling process. <coughs> Dropping a minion at that army camp, we're going to score that with ease. Baby dragon's still actually healthy, so we're going to go ahead and take that storage out too. Dropping that uh, second golem and a rage and a couple of bowlers. He walks a little bit more uh, towards nine o'clock than I think. Uh, well, I guess it worked out, um, but uh, we we got the funnel there. That's that's what counts, right? So uh, the golem, or <clears throat> excuse me, the barbarian king is going to make his way with the pack of bowlers and the queen behind him uh, towards that first inferno tower. We opted for early rage there to kind of just catapult them towards uh, uh, that core. And uh, as we're jumping in, take we're pretty much taking out everything in its path. So um, already have the percent here, so 55, 56 percent, uh, and, and the queen's still up with her ability. We have two archers remaining and a minion, so we're gonna get a really big percent on this hit. So with a baby dragon doing work at around eight o'clock, uh, we're already at 64 percent, and we're gonna end healthy. Uh, with a 66, uh, I believe. Is he going to get that cannon down? I can't remember. I believe this is a 65% uh, uh, rate. So, heck of a job by Texas Hammer repping us uh, the One Hive 2.0 brand very well. So, next up, we're going to go ahead and show the um, 10v11. On base number one, Johnny Walker taking it out uh, with a drag loon. So we're going to go ahead and throw a couple loons at the corner here. This is to kind of assist, uh, well, rather, um, knock out the point defense that is uh, guarding those outer structures. So we're going to gain pretty, much, pretty good value from these uh, minions and archers at that corner here. So we want to be patient as possible. And just try to get as much percent as possible before we activate the eagle. Um, so, in just a moment, we're going to use essentially the same strategy over at six o'clock. But uh, we're going to go ahead and throw a, a hound down and some loons. Pre-dropping that haste. <clears throat> Uh, just get the just to get the loons in quicker, um, and drop that rage too. So we're gonna take out that wizard tower, the cannon, the air defense, and I think possibly the expo. I'm not sure, I can't remember. So no, we did not get the expo, but it's not a big deal. So um, 
we're gonna go ahead and get these outer structures taken care of with these minions <coughs> again a very good trade-off so we're already sitting at 12% uh, uh, and we're gonna finish off with 18% on these this corner here so uh, really good good there and then uh, at uh, uh, 10 o'clock we're gonna go ahead and drop with the king and the queen um, take out these and just kind of pinch that corner here so we're going to get pretty good value from that queen alone king knocked out a lot of with his barbarians and his ability knocked out a lot of that stuff kind of assisted the queen um and going in the direction that she went which is a very good thing now that uh, we're charting the dragoon portion here uh he's very patient with his spells here so we want to get as much value from this as possible <coughs> Uh, drops his rage right over the uh, defenses. Uh, it's going to take out that queen pretty quickly. The loons did get pretty good value. Um, knocked out the uh, air sweeper, um, and so uh, and and I didn't mention it, but he went with the zap quake to take out the other air sweeper here. So barely getting this town hall uh, with that dragon. So we got a little lucky there, but. Uh, we got the town hall, and that's all that matters. So 65%, uh, I believe, is what we ended on. Uh, what a heck of a raid. And uh, really, even better war. Uh, they did, and in fact, uh, like just a fantastic job uh, in this in this war. You know, it was, it was neck and neck, pretty much, uh, at the end. So one, 110 to 109. Uh, you can't really say that we... We crushed uh, one hive because they really put up a fight uh, at the end and uh, ended up getting an 11 v 11. Um, so just couldn't get the job done at the end, and uh, one hive 2.0 came out uh, uh, on top because of it. So, a uh, heck of a war. So, we're gonna go ahead and take a, a look at the stats here and, and really try to figure out why we uh we got the job done what what did we do that helped us uh win this war in the uh, in the end so let's take, go ahead and take a look so looking at the statistics here notice we didn't go do very well 10 v 10 going 3 and 22 um that leaves us at about 14 percent uh hit rate there uh it's not the best but uh you know we, we've we've done better in past wars uh, but it did secure us a, a couple of points. Uh, um, notice we also did very well, uh, 99 going 63% uh, and uh, whopping 100% on our all of our 11 v 10 dips. Um, now, I think the deciding factor, or the key factor rather, uh, in our success in this war was the top end, uh, which we secured all the two stars on all their 11s, um, going five and 14. Contrasting to that, uh, in the two areas that I mentioned, uh, uh, eleven v ten, they did make, or they did have three uh, eleven v ten dip fells, and um, uh, they only secured two stars on four of our elevens, uh, forcing them to uh, <laughs> do an eleven v eleven, which they did triple. Uh, it just was not enough in the end of the war. So really, I think the key factors to our success was us going 100% uh, on our 11 v 10s uh, and them uh, having a little bit of misfortune at the 11 v 10 uh, game. So overall, great uh, matchup between the two uh, one hives and one hive 2.0 really showed out and you know, they, it, we're kind of trending up anyways. Uh, so coming up off a high, off beating uh, Mariana Trench um, and, and a few others, Emphatic Elite, uh, we're on cloud nine, really. So we're a team to beat, and it's 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 not going to be easy. Um, so, uh, but hats off to One Hive for being good sports, and uh, big shout out to JJ Gaming and uh, Time to Clash with Adam uh, and all the other streamers that were involved, Rorak. Um, that uh, made a 24-hour stream possible. Uh, it took time out of their lives to get it done. So um, big shout out to those guys uh, for making it a very fun event for everyone. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.